Well, it's too late to stop now. This is the Righteous Bow Jambo, and it's time for us to talk about some Righteous Bow Jambo. Last week, a gentleman called Harold Bloom passed away. He was a crusty old literary professor who wrote half a hundred books, almost all of which were extremely dull and boring, except one. In 1994, he wrote a very long and plodding, but occasionally startlingly funny and politically incorrect book called The Western Canon, in which he argued that the whole aesthetic of literature was the sole judge of relevance or irrelevance in what he called the canon of literature, the body of literature from which all succeeding literature stems and bases its values. He also stated that the author's motives could not be imputed by anything but the text that was written. He criticised what he called the school of resentment which claimed that literature only had value in terms of the social or political issues that it addressed. Bloom didn't have a problem with literature having a social or political focus, far from it. What he did not like were Marxian or revisionist critiques in which the critic used their interpretation of those political or social issues to advance their particular slant on the narrative. I think it's fair to say that, on the whole, Bloom won that battle but over the next 25 years, still managed to lose the war. However, in the years after I endured reading it, I began to think that perhaps some of Bloom's arguments, whether I disagreed with them or not, and at first I disagreed with most of them, but have now drifted up to about 50-50, shouldn't or couldn't be applied to the then moribund and dead world of the music that I grew up listening to, the canon of my experience, as it were. So I started to piece together in my head what was in and what was not in that canon, and what could be included and what by its nature could not be. For example, Wagnerian opera, or most of what we would call world music. The more I messed about with these ideas, the more I saw factors that both the school of resentment could validly include, but in the context of the day, not in a Marxian revisionist sense, and pure external economic factors that began to shape the course of the music that I loved through the 75 years or so of its existence. So that, in a long and pretentious way, is what the Righteous Bow Jambo is. It's a look at the era of classic rock from 1964 to, say, 1985, but from the outside, from the contributory music that helped create it and the stories of the people who made it, and some peeks inside the classic rock to see what the main players and some of the more willfully obscure ones had done with those influences. Uh, jazz, hillbilly music, Piedmont, Texas and Delta Blues, Western Swing, the birth of bebop and rhythm and blues, early Atlantic records, the golden age of gospel, proto rock and roll, the first superstars of country music, honky tonk, rockabilly, Chicago blues, full blown rock and roll, the death of honky tonk and the rise of Contrapolitan and Bakersfield, the genius of Brian Wilson, cool and post pop jazz, the growth of the Jamaican music industry, the so called dead years before the Beatles, and then into the full classic rock era, and finally the death of classic rock. But we'll do it in no particular order. We'll go down some odd paths to other music not in the big list, challenge the great man, or in the case of such as Joan Jett, great woman narrative, and hopefully we'll arise at many more questions than we answer. I'm not going to invest your time in doing much in the way of album reviews or list shows, because there are plenty of other channels that do that much better than I have. So, that's our manifesto. It's going to be mad. So, until the next time we talk, or until the nasty YouTube police shut the channel down, you keep listening to the good stuff, and you stay righteous. Go back, because only a practice one. Go back, because only a practice one. <laughs> How's that look?
Ronnie Corbett style. 